Hi, I'm Lindsay Scott, and this is Chapter 12, Quasi-Experimental Design. Quasi-experimental designs attempt to control for threats to internal validity and thus permit causal inferences that are distinguished from true experimental design by the lack of random assignment of subjects. There are three types of quasi-experimental design explained in the text by Rubin and Babby. The first is non-equivalent comparison group designs, which is seen here. They are used when two groups appear similar, but they have not been randomly assigned. The dependent variable is assessed before and after an intervention and is introduced to one of the groups. The comparison group does not receive the intervention. It is also possible to use multiple pretests to strengthen the validity of non-equivalent comparison group designs. In my single subject research design, I am testing to see if 30 minutes of exercise after work will increase the overall well-being of an individual. So if my study was a non-equivalent comparison group design, I would test the well-being of my subject, provide the intervention, which is a 30-minute workout, and then test the well-being again. And I would find another subject similar to, um, to my subject and test their well-being, not provide the intervention, and test their well-being again. Second is a simple time series design. And in simple, simple time series design, there is not only a use of multiple pretests, but there is also multiple post-tests. And this design does not com require a comparison group. So here in my design, I would test the well-being of my subject for five days and then provide one 30-minute workout and then uh, test the well-being for another five days. The third type of quasi-experimental design in the text is multiple time series design. And these are stronger than temple, simple time series design. Um, because multiple time series designs add time series designs to non-equivalent comparison group designs. So the groups are measured at multiple points in time before and after an intervention is introduced to the experiment group. Next, we have cross-sectional studies, um, which examine a phenomenon by taking a cross-section of it at any point in time. They can be exploratory, explanatory, or descriptive in nature, and the book describes um, the U.S. Census as being a descriptive cross-sectional study. And also, they don't have great internal validity. Uh, they aim to understand causal relationships that occur over time, yet their conclusions are based on observation made only at one point in time, so they can't really do that. And then we have case control studies, and these compare groups of cases that have had contrasting outcomes and then collect retrospective data about past differences that might help explain the difference in outcomes. And similar to the cross-sectional designs, they are feasible because they can be taken at one point in time. They're also useful in helping generating hypotheses, and they have problems that can limit what can be inferred or generalized from their findings. So that means that they may not represent the population well, and uh, memories of those in the case control studies may not be correct. Uh, pitfalls in carrying out experiments and quasi-experiments in social work agencies. So social work agencies are controlled by people who are not researchers, that do not understand the research design, and that may attempt to undermine the specifics of the research design. So they may not follow the rules, they may not know exactly what they're doing, and therefore can cause problems in experiments in social work agencies. And there are four practical pitfalls in uh, carrying out experiments and quasi-experiments in social work agencies, and that is fidelity of the intervention, contamination of the control condition, resistance to the case assignment, and client recruitment and retention. And that is chapter 12.